What was your childhood like as far as the life of the mind? My parents were doctors, so I came from an intellectual background. Uh, my, my interest in mathematics came rather early. Ah. By the time I was 13, I was sure I would be a mathematician. And I had an uncle who was an engineer who was very talented in mathematics. At age 18, he had won the Utwash competition. Ah. Uh, the Utwash competition, I don't know if you know about Please. it, established in, mm. I think, 1895. Uh, was given to graduating high school students and uh, most of the winners went on to make distinguished careers. So you had in the family somebody uh, yes. who had already invested a life in mathematics? Well, engineering. Uh, in engineering. Um, you say at 13, um, the first strong interest in math. How did that happen? I was uh, very good in mathematics and I, I loved it. I loved solving problems. Uh, and there was a very strong tradition in Hungary <clears throat> about mathematics. I remember I asked once uh, Marcel Ries, one of the distinguished Hungarian mathematicians, whence this tradition, where did it come from? And he thought, it goes back to Boyoi. I don't know if that name is known to you. Uh, you know about non-Euclidean geometry. There were uh, two pe people who thought of it. In fact, three Gauss, uh, Boyoi, and the Russian Lobachevsky. It's uh, uh, it's a uh, a new kind of geometry in which the axiom of parallels does not hold. So you, you had, I would argue, the advantage of a family that was interested, at least broadly, in science, yes. and then a culture that yes. emphasized the importance of it. Yes. So you were twice blessed, in a yes. way, to become a mathematician, but still, at 13, was it a book that you picked up? I mean, you, you knew you had some talent. But when did the idea come to you, I, this is what I will do? Well, uh, as I said, uh, mathematics was quite prominent in Hungary. Uh, I knew some, uh, let's see, uh, the daughter of a colleague of my father's was a mathematician who recommended that I be tutored, and ah. I had a wonderful tutor, uh, Rose Peter. Uh, uh, she wrote a book that became very popular in America. Uh, what is it called? The World of Mathematics. And you had regular um, I have encounters regular, with her. Regular instructions. It's interesting you, you, you bring up the year, uh, your age at 13 because, of course, at 15, the most dramatic thing possible happens to you. You and your family leave. Yes. yes. So, in a way, there's a, you're a young man. You're surrounded by the possibilities of mathematics. You're at school. Probably a very good school. Very good school. In Budapest, was it? Yes, yes. yes. I went to the Minto Gymnasium. That was a teacher training gymnasium. So you were, then at 15, your family had to leave because of the, the terrible events, I, I suspect, in Europe. Yes. But it gives us an opportunity to wonder about two styles of education in mathematics. Because as a 13, 14 year old, yes. you're at a great, I think, very good, certainly. Budapest school, a gymnasium. Yes. By the time you get to America, uh, when you are 15, you, I think you, you go to Stuyvesant yes. High School. Can you contrast the kind of education? This is a, a disruption. Yes. Well, when I got to Stuyvesant, I didn't take any mathematics. I ah. knew already 
all they had to offer. But uh, the style of school was in sharp contrast to Hungarian high schools. In what way? Well, in Hungary we were somewhat afraid of our teachers. I can't say that uh, they mistreated us, but they were authority figures. And in America, they were our friend. And was that, would you argue, because you've, you spent a lifetime as a mentor too, would yes. you argue that one system was better than the other in the development well, of the mind? the Hungarian system produced uh, many outstanding people. Uh, but uh, I was uncomfortable there, and ah. the contrast was very great. What you said you were not in mathematics in a way you had already learned what yes. they had to offer. So what did you what did you study in well, high school? Uh, I had to study English. Ah, of course, of course. And uh, this happened quickly. I mean, was English yes. in control pretty well, soon? Uh, I was able to pass uh, the English courses mainly because the examination questions were true or false. <laughs> so you had time to really perfect your English. Well, that's easier than a essay type. I think you were on the math team, though. I, mean, I you, was on the math team. And did you, were you impressed by your, um, your fellow students? Yes, or? yes. So, so the competition was interesting. Yes, yes. They, they were not competition. We were friends. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, several went on to become national figures. I'm really interested in the community. Your life will be an example of the community of mathematics, really? Yes, it is a community. And so as an early stage, in a way the community develops for you through this team. Yes. Uh, what holds that community together is that nobody who's not a mathematician understands what we are doing. Right. Some people, I think, who have won the level of prize and achievement that you have, um, often speak of loneliness, actually, in their development, particularly as a young person, before they maybe go to graduate school. But I'm sensing you didn't have this problem. No, no, I always had friends. You always had friends. You graduated, I think, at 17. Uh, 16 and a half. Anyway, <laughs> um, comparatively young. Yeah. The only reason I know about that is because uh, it is said that that gave you the opportunity in wartime to still have a little bit of higher education before That's the army. Correct. I had three semesters of college when I, I was drafted at age 18. 18. So you had a year, in a yeah, way, a little over. Um, where did you decide to go to university, and by then, what were you deciding to do in life? Well. Uh, my, when we came to America, my father turned for advice to a Hungarian mathematician, uh, Zago, yes. who was uh, head of mathematics at Stanford and built up Stanford. Uh, Mrs. Zago and my mother were cousins, so families were friends. And Zago recommended that I study this Courant. He said, Courant is a wonderful teacher. And that's the best advice. I... Describe a wonderful teacher in mathematics, because you became one yourself. Oh, <laughs> he was a most atypical wonderful teacher. As a as a lecturer, uh, well, he didn't prepare his lectures. Not by the time I was a student, uh, but. Uh, I saw that math mathematics was a living thing, not something out of books. Ah, and and was that was exciting? Sorry, that was exciting yes. to know that. Yes. Um, was it intimidating? I mean, uh, uh, not at all. It was a, a very friendly group. The graduate students uh, didn't compete with each other. They were friends and colleagues. But you weren't a graduate student. You were a mere freshman. And but early... I only took graduate courses. You only took graduate yes. courses. So clearly by then 
first of all, your talent was apparent. Yes. And they responded to that talent. Yes, yes. Um, in one of the seminars, I mean, were you perhaps even bored there in the graduate no. seminars? <laughs> no. That was the challenge. Yes. How, at this point, when you are conceiving a life as a mathematician, yes. and it will be interrupted, you have to go to the army, and we will talk about that, but as you think of your future as a mathematician, how do you think of the kinds of problems you will solve? How does a mathematician choose, begin to choose the areas in which to investigate? Well, you know, that depends on uh, his surroundings. Uh, before, uh, today with email, communications is uh, much broader, but then it was mostly personal. Because I'm not a mathematician, I don't know of all the problems and questions how a young mathematician says, I will pursue this. Well, uh, in my case, uh, it had very much to do that I was drafted into the army and then uh, I'm sure on their recommendation from Courant was sent to Los Alamos. And it was at Los Alamos that I was introduced to applied mathematics. Uh, uh, Los Alamos was the lab that built the atomic bomb and you cannot build an atomic bomb by trial and error. You have to be able to calculate it exactly. exactly. So mathematics became extremely important, the ability to calculate. A very important figure at Los Alamos and, and for my life was von Neumann. Uh, I don't know how much you know about von Neumann. Tell me. Sorry? Tell me. Okay, well, yeah. I'm utterly surprised that the name of von Neumann is not as well known as Einstein. Hmm. After all, his achievements were manifold. That he <laughs> is the father of the modern computer is only one of them. Hmm. But, and you uh, worked with him. I worked with him. Uh, as, and you were at this point 20, maybe. Sorry? You were about 20 years old at this time? Well, when I met him, I was uh, 16. 16? Yes. I, uh, when I came to America, uh, my mentors in Hungary uh, gave me letters introducing me to von Neumann. Ah. So uh, von Neumann came to see me when I was 16. Remarkable. So you, you met again at Los Alamos? Then we met again at Los Alamos. Extraordinary. And you were at that point about 20, 21. Uh, at Los Alamos I was 19, yes. 19. 19. And I suspect in mathematics, if they see in you the talent, they don't worry whether the young person is this age or that age. It's about what they can do. Oh, sure. <laughs> and so they were giving you responsible things to do in mathematics? Well, uh... Yes, I, I don't specifically remember now. I did calculations on aspects of the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. That was perhaps the most sophisticated mathematical problem. As I said, you can't design it by trial and error. Right. It has to work the first time. But you were not deciding on an army career. This is still... No, no, but it, it, it uh, uh, I became acquainted with uh, what math, uh, the importance of mathematics in technology. Ah, what is the importance of mathematics in technology? Well, you know, you can't uh, build an atomic bomb, as I said, by trial and error. Right. You, or build an airplane by child and error. You have to be able to calculate it. Right. 
you decided in the end to get actually a degree. Uh, I know life decided. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's sort of routine. Right, that's right. Routine. So you go back to NYU, if I'm I right. I go back to NYU. And um, basically, that becomes the context. You, 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 go, you get your degree. Um, probably it took some doing. Uh, because of all the various courses you had in various uh, places? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, I got my degree in 48 and, uh, and stayed on. Pretty much in the NYU context. In the, yes, yes. It's, this is perhaps not typical for the American experience. People move around. Right. But uh, there was sufficient. Well, uh, Courant and his school were so attractive and there was such variety that and I did have the Stanford experience. Now, I understand in Los Alamos there's a task to be done. You have to use mathematics yes. for the, to, to build a bomb. Yes. But once you return to academia, yes. there's no inevitability about the mathematics you choose to what purpose. So I'm still interested in the way a mathematician with your training yes. and advantages begins to pursue certain questions. Um, you're free to choose, I think, what you want to yes. pursue. So how do you begin to choose that direction? Well, of course, I was fascinated by the Los Alamos experience. Mm -hmm. In fact, later I went back for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that shaped my mathematical future. Here's, here's what I'm wondering, and maybe it's because I do not have a career in mathematics. Um, because of the range of possibilities, yes. um, certain questions, it seems, would excite me. Now I understand maybe the practical applications Yes. is exciting you based on your Los Alamos experience, yes. but the direction of the questions you ask yourself. Uh, every, every mathematician stands on the shoulders of earlier ones, the questions that they asked. Yes. Um, and um, I'm just curious about how you went in a certain direction. Um, maybe it, not just applied mathematics, but certain questions that yes. had been posed that perhaps you thought you could answer. Yes, well, uh, it was the general area of partial differential equations. Okay. You see, uh, most of the laws of physics are partial differential equations. That makes the subject extremely important. Right. And my, two of my teachers, in fact, three of my teachers, Kuran Friedrichs and Fritz John, worked in partial differential equations. So. That was a natural direction for me to go. Okay. The lax conjecture. In a way, you pose a question to others. Yes. Yeah. You may remember, do, uh, uh, does the name Fermat's last theorem? Yes, of course. Well, that, well, that was a conjecture posed in the 16th century. I see, I see. So you, you throw out a question to the ages, yes. in a way takes two, three hundred years to, to resolve. Now your conjecture took, I think, about four decades to resolve. Um, again, as a layman, I wonder how one looks at the world dealing with your conjecture, your theorem. I mean, did it go out in a number of places? Did you see the kinds of responses? Yes, well, uh, in my time, Mathematics was always international, you know. Uh, uh, during the darkest days of the, the coldest days of the Cold War, uh, Soviet mathematicians, American mathematicians, were on most cordial terms. There was no Cold War in mm. mathematics. Very important, yes. We, and as soon as travel was possible. I first went to the Soviet Union in 1960. Really? I've been there, oh, seven or eight times. 
And of course, for the Soviets, it was particularly who were isolated by their government. The contact was particularly important and uh, exciting. How important is actual physical interaction um, for the development of, of the mathematical conversation? Uh, I would say very important, hmm. very important. Mathematics, uh, it may not strike you so much. It's a very personal thing. So ideas generate, as they often do in many fields, through encounters, yes, not yes. only of minds, but of people. Yes, yes, it's very important. When, um, as your career develops in mathematics, one of the things that is used to describe you, and it, it's said to be quite unusual, is your versatility. Uh, in terms of the questions you were interested in, your relationship to both pure and uh, applied mathematics. Yes. Um, did you find that unusual in your field? Did, did you find your, your colleagues more likely to want to stay in uh, one? Yes, perhaps my career was unusual because I was exposed, as you say, to so many different, so many different kinds of questions, so many different circumstances. The setting at Los Alamos had a very important influence. Clearly, maybe a definitive influence in terms yes, of how yes, you yes. looked I at these questions. I saw how mathematics could win the war. Can you give me an example I might understand where uh, a question in applied mathematics then led to a theoretical? Well, uh, I think it's, it's good to remember that uh, Newton was not only the creator of calculus, but the creator of, of uh, science, of physics, mechanics. So they Mathema modern mathematics and physics were born hand in hand. So you think that's a, a false distinction in a yes, way? Yes, it's a very false distinction. It's a, there's a kind of snobbery Please. about purity of mathematics. I never suffered from it. Eventually, of course, and probably all along, your fellow mathematicians were intrigued rather than contemptuous of your ability to, to work effectively in both fields? Yes, yes. Well, uh, of course, uh, Courant was very broad-minded. He was interested in both pure and applied mathematics. So I was very fortunate to be brought up in his school. Yours has been a fortunate life. We know a productive life, but fortunate in the end. Yes. because of these connections and so yes, forth. Yes. And, and accidents that worked for you too. But yes. were there stumbling blocks? Were there times when you could either not find the resources to follow a field that interested you or you did not have around you the colleagues you needed to develop an idea? Were there problems as well as uh, successes? Uh, well, because of the... Uh, success of uh, well, the atomic bomb and atomic energy, mathematics, which was a byway in the old days, suddenly was thrust to front and center. I see. So your generation... And for my generation. ...benefited from this benefited fact. Suddenly me. people, even people who were not mathematicians, yes. understood its value. Yes. Um, so resources were usually available to you? They were uh, very much available. And uh, uh, Courant was very good in seeking out and securing resources. He was a very remarkable man. As a teacher, in, in, in a field that does not have so many people in it and so many young people coming into it, yes. um, how do you seek out talent? How do you recognize it? How do you welcome it? Well, uh, 
the Courant Institute was a big school, large faculty, many students. I had uh, 55 PhD students. 55? Yes, it's a, it's a large number. That's, that's an enormous load. I didn't think of it as a load. Ah, well that's already a secret uh, to success. Uh, so you, you, you dealt with 55 minds, yes, so to yes. speak. I benefited from it myself. And benefited from it. I had uh, many uh, students who stimulated me. For instance, Alexander Chorin, who is now at Berkeley, but uh, many others as well. I was very fortunate in having stimulating students. Would you describe the relationship between student and teacher in mathematics as collegial, always? Very collegial, very collegial. To be a student of mathematics today, is it very different from either your time or the generations you taught? Oh, yes. Uh, the, the time scale of mathematical research has changed. In the old days, it was not unusual for a person to spend his lifetime on the same problem or the wow. same area. But today, with so many people working on a subject, an area, and the subject gets exhausted, so people have to move on to other things. That's a profound change. It's a profound change. What about the idea of getting what I call the clever young together. And something like uh, in Heidelberg now, they, they have meetings of uh, uh, young people with uh, commitments to new ideas and so forth. Do you think those are useful ways to build? Yes, yes very useful. I would say even essential. Can you, can you tell me why? I mean, even, even if they're not in the same field, but more Human contact is very important in every field, including mathematics. 